Hello everyone and welcome back to another Universe Sandbox video and today we're going to be doing another episode of making a Neptune blue coloured solar system and what we're going to be doing today is we're going to go over a few things I've added because basically what happened was I actually already filmed this video and I lost the recording, I lost about half an hour worth of footage so I've got all of the objects made and saved but I haven't got any footage of them which is very very annoying so yeah what we're doing instead of a creating new objects we're just going to go over everything that i added and then um i'll try and talk about how i uh, made them and stuff like that so we'll go all the way um in here so you can see there's a lot more stuff than there was in the previous episode we've got some more eccentric orbits out the back here but yeah we'll go into the uh closest saucy um modern neptune we had this in the previous episode this uh very very hot one indeed i'll see going around the star fairly fast then next out we had lp12 we also made that in the previous video so that one is looking awesome uh, then we had this one as well, also made that one in the previous episode. Same with 55 Kankrai, that was also the previous. Um, I believe Salby over here, I think this was in the previous, I'm not sure. This may have actually been a new one actually, so as we can see, it's a nice simple rocky planet design but with a mixture of white and blues, giving it quite a cool sort of frozen almost appearance, even though it's at 25 degrees Celsius, so it's quite a nice looking one there. So that was the first, I think this was a, uh, yeah, this was quite a small little spawn. Okay, right, then we have, won't move on to Gasa Blue here. So this is obviously our brown dwarf, which is blue. So around here, we had this planet here. So this was also a new one that I had uh, spawned in, I believe. So we have this one here. I may have some of these wrong. I can't remember because I did film the video um, yesterday as well. So I can't remember all the new ones and what was in here before. Uh, Pascal, obviously this was one we had from the previous um, episode as well. So that's looking good. 25 degrees, nice and comfortably there. If we take a further jump out, we had Cold Fermia. This was also um, one I believe we had in the previous episode. But that one is such a good looking object, I think. So we had that one there. Okay. Okay, so now zooming out from there. We had at Christmas. Now, I know this was a new addition, so this one, I've got to say, this one was really, really cool, and I really enjoyed making this one. So I'll go and give you, um, or I'll show you what it originally looked like. Um, so this was one of the objects from the Christmas competition video we had, obviously, way back um, at the end of last year. Um, this planet was originally gold, like a golden red colour, but as we can see, it's uh, completely different to the way it used to look. So it's one of these Christmas objects here. Uh, let's just wait for the menu to uh, load up. Come on, menu. I need to see which one it is. So it was uh, this one here. So this is what it originally looked like. And then that's what I turned it into. So I've given it the Neptune blue uh, atmosphere. It's got like a nice uh, Neptune blue ocean underneath. Some of the land is also Neptune blue as well. Some of it's a bit frozen up as well there. Obviously, Neptune blue lights. So I basically specced it out in Neptune color. So yeah, overall, it's um, I think it's quite a nice sort of upgrade from that. So obviously... I could give you try and build you a quick replica right now. So atmosphere, obviously, I made that blue. And then onto the surface colours as well. I got rid of this pink. I made the middle colour blue like that. So as you can see, we're starting to get more similar. Clouds, I turned those to white. And then all I simply did was uh, city lights as well. We need to change those. So again, that was blue like that. And then uh, clouds, all I simply did with the clouds was I made them double storm mode. So we got that. So, although not 100% the same, that's basically the gist of it, and that's how I did it. So, you can see here, there you go. That's um, how I did it. We can see, the. if you look at the different colours, I mean, yeah, we practically got them uh, spot on there. And also the watercolour. Yes, this was dark red originally, and I made it dark blue. So, it made it, um, there's a few visual changes, but yeah, it made it look slightly different. So, we'll see that can obviously range up and down, but you had it in the dark blue like that and there you go that's practically how i built this object see i've got to say this is probably one of my favorite ones i actually put in the system when i filmed this yesterday and uh lost it which is really really annoying so um yeah that was that one so yeah christmas even though it's not really christmas anymore still called christmas and yeah it's a good looking object i think i think it's a really nice uh, earth like world obviously it's at 24 degrees it's fairly comfortable and then onto the stats it has some pretty strong stats of 96 and 56 there so yeah i'm really pretty pleased with that okay Right, so next up, we have Christmas. Then we had this world over here. So this was Akam. This was another sort of dwarf planet art, which I slung in. So as you can see, it's very, very small. And it's going with like a black and blue theme as well. So there you go. So a nice little uh, small dwarf planet in there. Okay. And I believe this may have been the last... Yeah, this was the last object to orbit the main star. 
So now we're going on to our second star pro corn over here. So if we go all the way down here, I think of this object here, this was a new one I added in. So it was a uh, Mad Planet Guys Competition 55 Can Cry E. So this one doesn't look like its original version anymore, but I still think it looks great. So uh, where, where are we? So 55 Can Cry Let's just give it a search up, actually. Okay. So where are we here? So it's this object here. This is what it was based off. And this is what it looks like and now. So as we can see, the original model, obviously it had yellow for a surface. Obviously that has all turned to blue now. And obviously um, blue underneath. It's still going with the black clouds it originally had. So yeah, this one does have black clouds. You just have to look a little carefully for them. So if we just open this up, have a little look um, in there. It doesn't even have an atmosphere. This one was quite weird. But I think we had to manually give it an atmosphere for it to sort of fix it. I can't remember how this worked actually. Um, surface pressure, we'll just go to ATM, uh, 1 ATM. Yeah, this one was quite buggy. So, we uh, have a little look underneath it. Now that didn't do it. But yeah, that was the gist of it. So, obviously, to make this one, I had to customise a lot of it, actually, to completely overhaul this and uh, respray it, really. So, I made it uh, more bluer there. And yeah, it was mainly lots of this, really. So, there you are. And I also uh, played around with its temperature. But I roughly made it like that. Also, if we compare it to this one uh, and open up there. As you can see, that's the colours I use, so obviously... It's fairly, fairly similar, but um, yeah, this was the uh, final result from customising that one. So it was a uh, still very, very hot temperature one. I mean, if we run the simulation here, it's sitting at 591 degrees Celsius. It is very warm, and i got to say, I really, really like the black storm clouds. I think they look very menacing um, with that Neptune blue build on it. So yeah, there was that one. Cool, cool. All right, next up, Klepler 442B. This was an object from one of the competitions as well. I think this was Core's one that he um, sent in first. And I made this one quite ocean world, very, very friendly looking. It's 108 degrees, though, so it's quite a hot ocean world. But it still has its super earth characteristics. It's obviously large, got its ocean on it. And yeah, overall, a very nice looking mode. A very simple one. This all I had to do was simply change the atmosphere colour and the ocean colour. And I got this result. So yeah, it was Cause one. So it's just spawning the original inspiration for it. So this is what it originally looked like. And then that's what I turned it into. So for instance, if I want to quickly make a build for this, all I simply did was this, pretty much. And then there you go. That's pretty much the uh, same result there. So yeah, there you go. That's literally all I did for this one. So, yeah, very, very nice and easy to do. And, yeah, overall, I'm very, very pleased um, with the way that one turned out. I think it's a great-looking ocean world, honestly. And, yeah, I'm really, really happy with the way that one turned out. So, there was that one, Kepler442B. Right, next up, we had Kepler22B. So, obviously, this was from the previous episode. And, yeah, this one also went with that sort of deep blue ocean. I'm re I think I'm going to use this in my size comparison this year as my new Kepler22B because I just love the way the clouds are, the deep blue underneath it. That's a good-looking world. Yeah, but that was previous one, previous video. Then we had uh, my default Neptune, or my default uh, enhanced Neptune here. So, obviously, we've seen this one loads of times before. Um, and, yeah, that was already added in the system, I believe. Then we had the dark spot Neptune. So, this one I added um, yeah, yesterday when I filmed this. Oh, so here it is over here. So, dark spot Neptune. And as we can see, what I found out, discovered with this as well, because it's in between both stars currently, it has two dark spots two dark areas because of the negative contrast also if there's two stars there's two light sources that's going to make two sets of negative contrast so it actually has in theory two dark spot appearances on it so that is it's pretty cool so yeah there's the dark spot neptune i'm very pleased with the way that one turned out with that and then lastly we had fittiness over here which was a uh, little dwarf planet so all the way over here going with a uh, neptune blue and white color theme so there it is looking good cool cool so there was fittiness. Right, now we're taking a bigger jump out. So we had a Zikara over here. So this one was a Neptune blue, uh, thick atmosphere Neptune blue one. And it was mostly a ocean world underneath, if I remember right. There we go. So it was, uh, yeah, it was, it was actually blue. It was Neptune blue ice underneath. Obviously, it had a white atmosphere. And then it had a thick, or white clouds with a very thick blue atmosphere. So it's just a very frozen blue world, really. Very, very blue indeed. So there was that one. Okay, next up we had... Okay, so this is where we get into the outer regions of the system now. So there's our... This is pretty much the end of the outer solar system here. And now we're onto the kind of the depths over here. So this one, I'm not going to zoom in all of these because these were just dwarf planets which I spawned and customised the colour of. So there's not really much going on with these ones. So we have this one here. Then we have this one. So again, they just they just have blue modified on them somewhere. Then we have an area over here. So this is one I will visit. So this is one with crazy, crazy negative contrast. 
So it's got a very, very strange dark spot effect. So it's a very mysterious world I've slung in the outer regions here. I mean, it does look very bizarre indeed. And yeah, that negative contrast does make it look very, very bizarre. So that world, a mysterious world hidden on the outer depths of the system here. If we look, it takes 5,000 years to go around the star as well. So yeah, pretty crazy stuff there. Next up, we have Curio, the last of the dwarf planets over here. So again, this was just another... Um, just default one customized with one color of blue on it that's all i did to it was just yeah or two shades of blue on it that was that and then lastly over here we have this one and i shouldn't have actually clicked on it because we have the color we have the appearance menu open at the moment and this is the neptune with about twenty thousand different bands on it so that may have frozen our game for a little bit there because this one is pretty crazy but that was the last object i decided to throw in the system and it's the most outermost yeah, object in the system and yes even further out than curio here there it is um we're just going to go to the overview there actually it's probably best i just close the menu really because this one is just insane when you uh, open this menu look how slow my game has got since i've just opened this one i mean that is how yeah i don't even want to click because it will just freeze my game but yeah this object it has a lot of bands like there you go okay so now we are free to move I mean, even just closing it, it still lags. It still lags our game. I mean, that is how crazy that object is. But yeah, that's um, all of the objects I added in this system. So come on, game, you got to close it. I want to at least get closer to it. Come on. There you go. Are we happy now? Okay. Yeah. There you go. Okay. So we can zoom in on it all the way down. Sarah is there, so there's a good view of it. So it's very, very blue enhanced. The one thing um, I did want to show you guys as well, which I did in the video. So if I, I, I landed on top of Neptune here. I looked back at our star. Look at all the gas going on it as well. It's such a cool looking world. Let's just slow down time and just take a moment to enjoy that as well. But if we look in the sky at the system, I think that's quite a cool view. So you've got our main star. We are there. Our main star is Denev. Then you've got Procorn. And you've got our brown dwarf there in the sky as well. So you've got three stars in the sky of this world in the literal depths the very very far depths it still receives light from the star though which is cool but it is the outermost most outermost planet by far if we look at the orbit again i mean yeah it's considerably further than anything else in here so yeah there you go and also one thing i'd like to show you guys as well is just the views of the system from different locations so next up we have got the kepler 442b here so we've got a nice view from this one let's land on this uh, little uh, island here go underneath it obviously underneath the clouds got a really cool sky color going on there with the clouds and atmosphere so if we look up into the sky you've got our main star over there deneb then over here we got the brown dwarf in the sky and then lastly the star this planet is orbiting over there is procorn so yeah really nice view from this world as well and i've got to say this is such a nice looking world honestly it is a great looking world with that deep blue color to it i think it's a great great modification to uh this uh object that one of you guys sent in it was cause one wasn't it i think so yeah honestly i'm really really happy with the way that one turned out i think that's probably my favorite earth flight world in here and that is it was a very hard decision to make but I th i'm really really happy with the way this one turned out i think it's so simple but it just looks so good i think i love the blue atmosphere i think the deep blue ocean really gives it what it or really really makes it what it is really and obviously the just the the ocean or the land, the land color, it's still a fairly brownish color. I like it. I, I, I really, really dig the way that one looks. And also, it's got city lights on it as well. Like, I, I think that is a great looking planet. So, yeah, there was that one. And then, uh, yeah, lastly, one more view of the system from one of the objects around our brown dwarf. So, we'll quickly hip hop to this one here. So, this is our uh, little dwarf planet here. So, we'll quickly land on you. Turn all the uh, bits and bobs off there. And obviously look in the sky. So over there, you've got Procorn. That's the secondary star. And in the sky, obviously the Brown Dwarf is our closest parent planet. And then lastly, over there, we have Deneb. So, uh, yeah, I'm just really, really happy with the way this system turned out. And uh, yeah, I'm really, really annoyed that I lost my recording for this because it was it was really it was a really really good one of designing all of these guys but yeah i've shown you um all the objects so so we've gone we've run for it all so at least i managed to um, show you guys that i mean at least i didn't lose the system right after filming it because that would have been a disaster but yeah here we are and then lastly one cool little shot i got in the end of that video as well was this view here of the brown dwarf with uh pascal looking over the brown dwarf with the main star in shot as well i think that was a cool little way um to show this uh final shot off but yeah there you are guys so that is a full tour of uh the neptune blue system completed or the neptune blue system remastered completed so yeah i really hope you enjoyed this system and yeah what we'll do as well before we finish up obviously we've got to have a lineup of them all so there we are 
If we go all the way down here, obviously, gas are blue, largest in here by miles of the gas objects, I guess. Also, you got the two stars, brown and dwarf, and then onto the planets. So, you got uh, Blue Leo here, then you got the negative contrast one, then you got the three sort of Neptune, oh no, the four Neptune variants down there. Then you've got into the uh, Super Earths. So we've got Kepler 22b there as the largest of the Super Earths. So and we got uh, the 55 Can Cry with those menacing dark clouds there. I want to see that one. I think that one looks great as well. Then we have the other 55 Can Cry we had in the previous video. Then we have Kepler 442b. The, I think the best looking rocky planet in here, honestly. I think it's a great looking world. Then we have LP12. Then we have Christmas here. Also a very, very good looking world, I have to say. Really, really like that one. Then we have Pascal. Also one of my favourites. And then we have um, all of the other ones in here. So Cold Fermi, that was a good looking one. And then obviously onto the dwarf planets down here, all of the small ones. Some of them are losing material. But that's just the way it goes in this system. And yeah, there you are. So there's a full line off this system. But yeah, guys, let me know what planet do you think is the favourite or your favourite in this system. i got to say, I'm really, really happy with the way this has turned out. So I hope you guys are as well. And yeah, any feedback, suggestions, other planet systems we could uh, build, customise, or colour theme systems, let me know down below in the comments. And yeah, I really hope you enjoyed it. And um, yeah, let's see if we can go for 40 likes on today's video, guys. Subscribe for more help us and journey to 22,000 subscribers. And yeah, with that all said and done, guys, make sure you all have a great day. Stay safe out there, and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.